the baseball practice, not knowing they were going to be ambushed. And after the shooting this morning in Alexandria, Arizona Senator Jeff Flake recalled how he used a tourniquet to try and save a staffer. And then he ran over to apply pressure to the wounds of Congressman Scalise. It's these kind of actions, they're unexpected situations that a local hospital system wants to train everybody on. ABC 2 News Mallory Safaste tells us how you can stop the bleed. So if I see someone obviously bleeding to death, I'm going to come upon them, I'm going to assess them, I'm going to try to hold pressure to stop the bleeding. It's here in the basement of shock trauma that Dr. Jason Paisley teaches combat medics skills they might need on the battlefield. I pull it very tight to try to stop the bleeding here and then turn the tourniquet here. What to do in situations when someone is shot or loses a limb in a blast. Gruesome bodily injuries no longer limited to combat zones. We're now seeing the wounds of war on our home soil. Unspeakable tragedies like the Boston Marathon bombing and mass shootings at Pulse nightclub in Newtown, Connecticut. An elementary school shooting that claimed the lives of 20 children and six teachers. Dr. Jacobs reviewed a number of the autopsy results on the kids that died at Sandy Hook and realized that a sizable percentage, probably 30 or 40 percent, died of potentially preventable hemorrhage. They died from uncontrolled bleeding, something Dr. Lenworth Jacobs, along with a committee dubbed the Hartford Consensus, is trying to prevent. They publish reports recommending that the public play a role as first responders in mass casualty events. The American College of Surgeons and Homeland Security then launched the Stop the Bleed campaign. In a mass casualty incident, the first thing the police are going to do is make sure they suppress the threat so no one else gets injured. After that, the scene needs to be secure before EMS and actually uh, medical people can come in to help. Sometimes that takes 10, 15, 20 or 30 minutes. It only takes around three minutes to bleed to death. So the immediate response from the bystander is what can really save lives, whether that's in the classroom, at home, at school, or on the street. And that's why we need to teach everybody. The University of Maryland Medical Center wants to train the public on how to apply tourniquets and pressure to stop bleeding. The basics are finding the bleeding, and then just with, like with when anything is bleeding, it's holding pressure, using both your hands, putting your whole weight into something, and just holding pressure. Kind of like sticking a finger in, in a, a leaking dam or something. The hope is to make this training as standard as CPR. If you don't have gauze like this, mm -hmm. using a scarf, using part of your shirt, cutting off a strip of cloth or clothing or whatever mm -hmm. to jam in that wound is how you can really stop the bleeding. <laughs> And just like you see defibrillators in public places, they'd like to see more access to tourniquets. You can save lives if you learn this stuff. We hope you never need to, but by God, if you need to, you can do it. Life has become a minefield. It's no longer a matter of if, but when you might find yourself in an emergency situation. If you're going to walk into a place that has a lot of people, if you're going to a ball game, if you're going to see the Ravens play ball, if you're going to a concert. If you're going to work in a big building like this, it could happen. I mean, if we've learned nothing else in the last few years, we've learned it can happen. It's not a pretend theoretical consideration. Whether it's an act of violence, car crash, or accident at home, this life-saving procedure is meant to buy time until paramedics arrive. You don't stop to bleed, the patient dies. It's pretty much that simple. Using lessons from the battlefield to save people in Baltimore. Mallory Safaste, ABC2 News.